You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Peace Explorer with your host, Dr. Gail Lash. Dr. Lash's company, Tourism for Peace, helps to encourage people to get to know one another and to honor the diversity of the human race and the sacredness of Mother Earth. So now, please welcome the host of Peace Explorer, Dr. Gail Lash. Hello and welcome. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and you're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today's show is called Changing Mindset from War to Peace. And I think this is very appropriate. We talk about this today because today is December 7th. And in December 7th, 1941 was when the Japanese bombed bombers attacked the United States nail base at Pearl Harbor destroying 19 ships, 188 aircraft, and killing over 2,300 Americans. And this, of course, is the act that drove the United States into World War II. So there's many aspects of war. Today we're going to talk about really that war can be many things. It's not just fighting between two nations or enemies. It can also be the war of thoughts that go on in our minds or actions against others who are just not like us in our cities, our workplace, and our neighborhoods. So the question is, can we create a world without war? Think about that. (laughs) Well, this is what we're going to be discussing today with our guest, uh, David Langness, who I'll bring on after the first break. But today, I just want to take a moment to introduce myself and talk about the vision of Peace Explorer, what that means, how it ties into the topic we're going to be talking about today, and really about, you know, peace and war are not exact opposites. A peace is much, much more than just the absence of war. It is really a mindset, and, and that's, of course, what I want to get into today as well. But it's the way we think about ourselves. It's the way we think about others. It's the way we think about our Earth, our global, our, not only our global society, but the actual Earth, Mother Earth that we all live on. It's important to realize that we are dependent on the natural resources and on the, on the Earth. And I am a biologist, <laughs> so I'm speaking from that biology point of view that We exist on this planet, and we have to use her resources, but we are also of that earth. And it really is important to start to think about creating our societies based on how do we work with Mother Earth, not necessarily against her, not just using her for how we can extract the different things from her earth, uh, the gold, the minerals, the water, air, and and the oil, but really think about how we can create sustainable societies. And I know I've talked about that a little bit in previous shows. Certainly we'll get into that in future shows as well, because Peace Explorer is about finding ways to create an earth, a human society that works in tandem with each other, that works in harmony and grace, and that really embodies this unity, this mindset of unity that is not only among people, but with everything that is living on this planet. So Peace Explorer encourages you to really start to think about this mindset. How do I fit in to this overall picture? What can this world look like if it is one that perhaps does not have war, but really has ways that we can work together as not only our community, but our nations and our global society? How can I use, tap into the resources and use Mother Earth in a sustainable way? How can I create actually places of peace is what I'm calling them, where we can have this kind of dialogue, where we can have community discussions about what this might look like? 
There's a wonderful facilitation process called the World Cafe, and I actually hope to have a guest on at a later show talking about the World Cafe. You can look it up. Uh, It is about having conversations in small groups and with really key questions that the group starts to dissect and starts to come up with a group answers to that to those questions so the, at these places of peace that i w- it would encourage you to create and we'll talk about that in a minute how can we have these discussions to better our community to start to talk about what peace is what it might look like how we might stop bullying in schools how we might uh, create a better uh, put in a well for the community to draw water that benefits the entire community, how we might create a electrical grid that is a, within the community's purview and control so that everyone in the community gets electricity, but in a natural way. All these different kinds of different questions <laughs> that we have for society. So my background is in biology, as I said. I've traveled the world. I've lived in different communities of different cultures in different places, uh, Ecuador, Indonesia, Thailand, Belize, many different places, and really noticed that as we travel the world and start to look at our fellow human beings, we have very many things in common. And just because we have different cultures, different dances, different languages, different habits of what we eat and how we use the earth, we really are all one humanity. And of course, looking at that from a biology point of view, we are one humanity. We're all homo sapiens. But I think we're developing into a new kind of homo, if you will, a new kind of homo sapiens. But homo sapiens, not just the wise man, but perhaps one that brings in that connection to all. You could use the word spirituality. You could use the word connection. It's about how do we tap into that wellspring of well-being that we each possess. Okay, I've covered a lot here. (laughs) So let me introduce our peace concept. We talk about this in every show, and I pick a virtue, if you will, from virtuesproject.org, I believe it is. And the one I want to talk about today is honor. You know, many times the word honor, we we use it in, in several different ways. But let me read you what this card says. They have little decks of cards and, and a family and a teacher's guide of how to use these virtues. It says, honor is deep respect for what we know is right and true. It is living up to the virtues of our character. We honor our abilities by using them for a meaningful purpose. Honor is appreciation in action. We honor others when we treat them with dignity they deserve. Others can trust us to keep our word of honor. When we do things we are ashamed of, we restore our honor by taking responsibility and making amends. We do our duty, whatever the sacrifice it requires. We act with integrity, not to be admired, but because it is the right thing to do. And then they give little practices of using this virtue. And it says, I practice honor when I live by my principles. I cultivate the virtues and talents I have been given. I treat others and myself with dignity and respect. I am trustworthy in keeping my agreements. I strive for impeccable integrity. I do what I believe is right no matter what. So today, think about that word honor. We can honor ourselves others, the earth, the animals, all living beings, as I was saying. I heard a talk yesterday actually talking about this from uh, Kat Zarvis and Rabbi Michael Lerner of the Spiritual Progressive Network, and I encourage you to check them out, spiritualprogressives.org, really talking about how we can create this new bottom line of love and justice, that money doesn't have to be the bottom line, actually, of our corporations and governments. And so we'll talk about this when we come back. And with our new guest, David Langus, that I want to introduce, we're going to take a short break. Please stay tuned, because afterwards I'll bring on David, and we'll dive deep into this topic of changing war into peaceful actions. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. 
French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at Renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back, everyone, to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. So just before the break, we were talking about changing a mindset of war into a mindset of peace and how we can do that, what different actions we might take, and what that might look like. And I have a guest today, David Langness, who has written so many articles, um, has has actually worked and acted in this way in his 30 years as a in a professional career. Let me give you a little bit about um, a bio about bi- about David, and then we'll invite him to the show to talk about this topic of war and peace, if you will. He just recently finished his first novel, by the way, so I guess we're all looking out for that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But really, he was a veteran of more than 2,000 media interviews. He has been recognized as an international expert and several advocacy and policy sectors, including global nuclear disarmament, healthcare reform, climate change, drug and alcohol dependency, poverty and homelessness. He's worked at Kaiser Permanente, uh, UCLA, Tenet Healthcare, the Hospital Council of Southern California, and he worked to ensure the passage and implementation of the American healthcare reform. He's also worked with the United Nations on uh, the United Way's national homelessness campaign called Home Walk, he, the Presidential Climate Action Project, and many other nonprofit organizations and advocacy groups. He's also worked with UN Secretary General um, Ban Ki-moon. He created and designed and branded the United Nations' most recent global nuclear disarmament campaign called We, Mu- we Must Disarm, or WMD and successfully launched that in six different languages around the globe. He's done so many other things. I I will stop here, and we will just welcome David to Peace Explorer. Thanks for being on today. Thanks, Gail. Good to be here. (laughs) So people can find out more about you at BahaiTeachings.org, and we'll get into some of the stories you've written for them, and that's B A H A I. T e a c h i n g s dot o r g. Um, you have written so many articles that I have written. I've read, and let me just read some of the titles to our listeners because I think they're fascinating. And then we can get into your story. Um, one article was "What Defines a Good Society." Another title was "Who's Your Community." Uh, another one is "Building Social Capital in Your Community." I like this one. Can cynicism ruin your life? (laughs) Uh, Overcoming fear of the future. How to build a united global environmental movement. 
and five things we can do to save the earth. Those are just but a few. So, David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you've, you've done so much. Thanks, Gail. Um, you know, I hate to talk about myself, but uh, <laughs> since you asked, I'll give you a three-hour dissertation. Just kidding. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I started out in life as the oldest son of a Marine World War II officer. And um, if, uh, if you can imagine for a moment what that was like, um, I, uh, I was raised in a household in which war was a, a constant theme. Uh, my father was very warlike and a violent man, uh, came out of World War II uh, with many, many medals and a lot of psychological damage. So early on, uh, because I'm kind of a rebellious sort, I became an anti-war activist at about the age of 14. And I began working in anti-war activities uh, pretty much all over. Um, got involved very young uh, in several anti-war groups. It was the time of the war in Vietnam and um, became a, a really committed anti-war activist. Uh, went to demonstrations, got tear gassed, got hit over the head with billy clubs, uh, oh with jailed, etc. Um, the whole, uh, I bought the whole package, in other words. Wow. Then, mm -hmm. uh, at 18, I had a big decision to make. Uh, would I register for the draft and would I go to Vietnam? Came from a pretty poor family, didn't have the money to really to go to college, uh, couldn't get out of the draft that way, as many people did. So I decided that I really had to go on a spiritual search and answer this question for myself. I did that. I searched through all kinds of spiritual traditions, Zen Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, which I had been raised in. I was raised a Lutheran, and finally discovered the Baha'i faith. Which, was, which is a faith that is uh, the most peaceful and nonviolent one that I could possibly find. I became a Baha'i, and on the same day, I registered for the draft. Oh, um, my goodness. Yeah, a year later, I was a conscientious subjector medic in Vietnam. And I wow. spent 14 months, a year and two months, in uh, the 101st Airborne Division, uh, in combat in uh, the northernmost part of South Vietnam near the DMZ. Uh, and, and many, many people uh, uh, died around me, uh, including a lot of close friends. So I had the opportunity, and I really do think of it as an opportunity now, to see war up close and personal uh, without a weapon. I was a conscientious subjector, a Baha'i, so I didn't carry a weapon. Uh, my job was to save people's lives, not take them. So essentially what happened during that period is it completely converted me into a lifetime of activism around the idea of peace and trying to find an alternative to human beings continually killing each other, which we've done for the last 6,000 years. Uh, that's a hard uh, thing to do. As, as all of your listeners, I'm sure, know. Uh, but it's, it's the thing that has really driven uh, my life uh, up until now. I'm 67 today, so it's been almost 50 years uh, since I began to make those decisions. And in those five decades, I've tried to do as much as I possibly could to remove the specter of war and armed violent conflict from the planet. Wow. <laughs> so is today your birthday? No, <laughs> my birthday okay. is not okay, till February. Meant, got uh, it, got it. Okay. You just mean now? Okay. I was like, whoa, did we get you on your birthday? <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Um, amazing work and life experience. So do you think we really can create a peaceful society? But actually, with that question, <laughs> we're going to be taking a short break. And I'm going to come back to David with the answer to the question, do you think we really can create a peaceful society? 
And we'll be back, so That's stay tuned. That's a big tuned. one. I'll think about it. <laughs> this is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various businesses interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. And we're here with my guest, David Langness, and we're having, we're talking about the big questions of, do we, you really think we can create a peaceful society? So, David, go for it. Oh, wait, I want to say also, we are live and we love questions. So please, if you'd like to call in with questions, call in at 866 866- Four five one one four five one to ask your question. Okay, David, what do you think about that? Can we really do it? Uh, yes, we can really do it. Uh, it is possible. Uh, we've done it before in our thirty five hundred years of recorded history on the planet. Uh, we've had peace for oh about four percent of uh, human history. <laughs> <laughs> so we've we've proven. <laughs> that we don't do it very often, but it is possible. Um, you know, uh, I have been really influenced by a fabulous book um, that was written by Steven Pinker uh, called The Angels of Our Better Nature. Um, and it traces the history of violence and warfare in human society. It's a huge undertaking. It's, you know, 600 pages of small type and lots of graphs and charts. But Dr. Pinker, who's from Harvard, uh, did an incredible job in uh, graphing our history of warfare uh, as human beings. And his conclusion flies in the face of most people's common wisdom. And that is, he says that violence has reduced over time and that it is continuing to diminish. It's a fascinating conclusion backed up by an enormous 10-year uh, amount of research that Dr. Pinker did. And his book has really set a lot of people in a different direction when they're thinking about violence in our culture. Uh, can we remove it? Yes, uh, we can. Not only can we, but we are doing that. Uh, there are fewer and fewer wars on the planet than there have ever been. We have not had a major world conflict for almost 70 years since World War II. And the regional wars that are still uh, going on in the world have actually diminished in their number. So can we do it? Yes, it's entirely possible. Uh, the Baha'i faith, which I'm a member of, uh, believes as well that peace is completely possible. 
and that it is the central purpose of all of the divine religions, the establishment of peace and unity uh, among humanity. Okay, so we'll get into that in a minute. I want to play devil's advocate. Why do we feel and see that war is so prevalent these days if indeed Dr. Pinkard's you know, facts are true? In other words, with the war in Syria, um, the genocide in Rwanda, all of these things that are happening on a global scale, is it just because we're hearing more about them now? Or what, what are your thoughts? Yes. Uh, in the past, uh, we heard very little about these regional conflicts. If there was a revolution in a country halfway around the world, like there is in Syria right now, for example, uh, the reporting of it was uh, slim or none. Today, because of the instantaneous global communication that we have and the enormous uh, job that's, you know, the tremendous job that's being done by the world's journalists, we know about these things. We see them visually on television, uh, which has never really happened before the last couple of generations. And, and they appear on our feed, you know, on Facebook every day. We see them constantly. So we're always reminded of that violence. And even though, in general, statistically, it has decreased, we tend to believe, Dr. Pinker's book goes into this a great deal, we tend to believe that it's increased. And that is really unfortunate, but it is a concomitant, uh, a direct result of our enormously uh, increased level of media awareness of what's happening around the world. There's a good side to that, of course. You know, it's terrific that we know about these things now, but the, the negative side is that we tend to think that war is everywhere when it's not. In fact, uh, one of the things Dr. Pinker says, and I uh, have done a little bit of this independent research on my own, that about one-sixth of the inhabited land on the planet now is in conflict. That means that five-sixths are not. And it's hard for us to see that negative, but it's really an amazing fact when you think of it. That is amazing. And I guess we are learning also how to be a global society. You were just pointing out about the media being instantaneous, global, you know, on our Facebook feed, et cetera, that we suddenly have access to global information. And we've never had that before in the history of the human race. How, how does that affect this view of war and peace? Well, it has uh, both negative and positive effects. The negative ones I've already mentioned. We have a heightened awareness of war, violence, and conflict all around the world. Whenever something happens on our local news, you know, the old saying in local television news is if it bleeds, it leads. And that means that if there's a crime, uh, you know, that gets the most attention at the top of the newscast on your local news. Um, unfortunately, uh, what the local news doesn't report is the absence of crime everywhere else. The fact that exactly. you know, a murder didn't happen in, in 50 <laughs> neighborhoods and did happen in one. Uh, so we get a heightened awareness of it, and that's the negative side of, of the media coverage of violence, conflict, and war. Um, and, and, and humanity's growth, and, though, and on the as positive a... side, uh, I should yes. say, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you, Gail? No, no, go for, go for it, go for it. On the positive side of that equation, we have an enormously interconnected world now. If I want to know what's going on in another country, it's pretty simple for me to find out. If I'm interested in what's happening in Albania, for example, where I spent some time during the NATO bombing and the genocide there in 1999, if I want to know what's happening in Albania today, I can easily learn. All I have to do is, with a few clicks, Go to the Albanian news media in English and, uh, and figure it out. Uh, there's no war there anymore. It's a peaceful place. Uh, it's growing. It's flourishing. I'm happy to say that uh, 18 years after the genocide and war in Kosovo and Albania, uh, things have gotten much, much better. Unfortunately, that doesn't get too reported. 
No, you're right. It doesn't. We're going to take a short break. We'll talk about the news and how we learn about each other uh, and create peace on the earth. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash, and I'm here with my guest, David Langness. We're talking about how to change a warlike mindset into a peaceful one and actually create a world of peace. And I'm laughing because it really seems like we can't do that. But we just had a discussion of, yes, it is possible. There's many places on the planet, actually, that used to have war that don't. We were just talking about the influence of media. David, so humanity's gone through many tr- transitions in its evolution um, of Homo sapiens, if you will, from tribes to city states to nation states, and now we are a global world. We we can, as you said, with a click of a button, really find out what's going on in different parts of the world. So, how has that change in human societal structure, if you will, from tribes to now a global society? How does that affect our mindset of how we create peace? Well, you like to ask the big questions, don't you, Gail? <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> but we can we can take it by you know we can nibble it down if we want to. <laughs> Please be a give I, us I examples. I think I'll have to do that. That's a huge question, <laughs> but I'll do my best. Um, you know, uh, there is as as you mentioned, Gail. Uh, a really long arc to human history uh, that began in the caves and that has ended in the high rises. But the funny thing is it hasn't ended. We, we continue to evolve just as we evolved physically. Uh, we, we also evolve societally and spiritually. Uh, we grow. That's what human beings do. And, and as we learn more, uh, as our technology increases, uh, you know, we we evolve into more highly developed species. That's happening in the world right now. Uh, we're at one of those points of evolution, as many, many uh, thinkers, philosophers, authors have pointed out, uh, that is a, kind of a breakthrough moment in human history. Uh, we've gone along, you know, the first big uh, nation state um, happened in the 1700s. We've gone along for a few hundred years uh, organizing ourselves uh, in these uh, uh, country sort of uh, uh, ways. Uh, we've, we've banded together. There are about 200 nations on the face of the earth today. And 
that's how we've organized ourselves. But that method of organization is quickly evolving into something new and different. As you pointed out, uh, we're a global society now. It's easy to travel. It's easy to learn. It's pretty simple to get from any place on the globe to any other place within a day. Uh, that's never been humanly possible before. And as a result, the, the Earth, as the old uh, cliche goes, has contracted into a neighborhood. Uh, I, I'm sure yes. all of us, everyone listening, understands that and knows people from different parts of this planet. That's never been possible before. And that has driven an increasing movement across the planet in every culture and civilization to unify, uh, to bring about a, a, a stronger sense of unity among those nations. We are moving toward, uh, and we're in the early stages of it, but in, nonetheless, it's very apparent that we're moving toward a world civilization. Hmm, interesting. So what might a world civilization look like other than what we are seeing today? Are we talking about a world? We already had the United Nations, which I know has no true. Uh, OK, I'm going to probably get myself in trouble. It has no true power <laughs> uh, of enforcement, in other words, but it does. But it does make at least a unified policies. They may not be followed necessarily. Uh, but but that is the – are we going to have some kind of governmental body such as the United Nations perhaps? You know, uh, I think that most people, most thinking progressive people now understand that because the earth is contracted into a neighborhood, because we really are all more than neighbors now, uh, humanity is really one uh, – we are going to need some better form of universal world governance than we have today. Unfortunately, when the United Nations was um, organized and, and uh, begun in 1945, uh, the power of that body was given to the Security Council, which is five nations, uh, and basically the winners of World War II, and those nations have veto power. So those nations control really what the UN can do. Uh, my vision and the vision of the Baha'i teachings is a, a democratically elected, global, federalized government. And that, I think, is the, uh, the thing, that, the goal that we're all moving toward. Uh, most of the governments in the world today, about 60% of the world's nations, are uh, liberal democracies, and wouldn't it be amazing if we had a similar democratically elected uh, government on a global level? And so this global governance could, democratically elected, could come up with ways that we actually then not only unify, let's say, our, I want to say ethics, our human rights, we already have a human rights doctrine, uh, actually enforce that and then put into effect how we use the earth in a sustainable way? How else would it bring about peace, if you will? Um, in, in my view, there are hundreds of elements that would go into uh, a global system of governance. But one of the main ones is the opportunity for that global system to demilitarize uh, and disarm the entire world. We would have to do that simultaneously, but certainly if national governments gave up some of their sovereignty voluntarily to this global system of government, we could reduce our armaments dramatically by a factor of, you know, uh, 90% around the world. And then that global government would have the power and the ability, uh, also the military force, to be able to stop violent conflict and war in the world. Um, it would have the ability, for example, in our current crisis uh, with North Korea, it would have the ability to stop member countries from developing 
uh, weapons of mass destruction and and stop them from deploying those weapons. Uh, it would be simple, actually, to do. It wouldn't re necessarily even require an army or conflict. We are all so economically interdependent now that all we would have to do is blockade a country and completely cut off its economic interchange with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And that would immediately stop that country from participating in conflict. Wow. Well, we're going to take a short break now, and we will be back in a minute to follow up with your analysis of a world governance and how it might actually create a world of peace with David Langus. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. You're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Welcome back to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. And we're here with my guest, David Langus, asking the big questions. How do we create a peace on earth and actually stop war, create a global governance? Wow. And before the break, David, we were talking about how one world global community or governance could actually help demilitarize, uh, stop the wars, really put in place some policies and and really simple, as you said, ways of of keeping everyone in line, if you will, and creating a better world. So I know those are big topics. You know, I, I just want to make a comment. When I was at um, the World Summit on Sustainable Development back in 2002, I was talking to some economists with the United Nations, and they were saying that if – only the top 10 countries uh, in the world who had the largest military budget took one-tenth of their budget and put it towards global poverty elimination, that we could cure all the poverty in the entire world. We could bring everyone out of poverty just from that, those dollars, if you will, being put on that. So let's talk about the economics or how we can start to maybe – not only on the global scale, but then let's bring it down to local scale, start to create a world of peace. All right. Um, I'm no economist, thank goodness, uh, the dismal science. But, uh, <laughs> but I do uh, play an economist uh, on the web. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, uh, peace has to do uh, in almost every way – with our global economy. We spend an enormous amount, and take this from someone who's been in the military, uh, uh, of, of our resources on killing each other. If we could divert even a percentage of those resources, it could educate the world, end hunger and homelessness, solve our climate change problems. I, I could go on but you get the picture. Mm -hmm. um, our, our military budgets are so huge, especially in the developing world, especially in the United States, uh, that it's almost impossible to imagine how much of our resources they take. Uh, the Baha'i writings, for example, uh, Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, said to all of the world's leaders uh, when he wrote them in the 19th century that they needed to disarm and stop putting the enormous burden of taxation that paid for militarization and armaments on their subjects. And that was long before we have the military budgets that we do today. So 
Baha'is and many others have advocated for a long time that disarmament and general demilitarization of the world could solve our problems. Uh, and certainly, uh, all the economic analyses I've ever seen indicate exactly that. Yes. Yeah, so when we're looking at the actual you know, dollars and the spreadsheets, you're absolutely correct. If we took some money from that and put it into these other humanitarian efforts, the world would be a very different place. But as an individual then, again, let's get back to the local communities, as an individual or, or my community collective, how either what is being done now, like some examples around the world, or what can I do then to create a more peaceful world at my local level? That you've seen, for thank example. You know, uh, thank you. Really, an excellent question, Gail, uh, and and one that has probably a thousand possible answers. I'll, I'll give you two. Uh, the first thing um, that I think is most important uh, for every individual human being to do is to search their own soul and figure out if their belief in peace is strong enough to impel them. To action. Uh, if it is, then definitely take action. Do something. Don't just sit there and advocate peace silently and quietly in your own home. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But action is the true gauge of belief. Uh, deeds, not words. Um, so first go through that process. Think about, you know, what could I contribute as an individual to the peace of humanity. Um, and everyone can do something different, you know. Just having a useful trade or craft, your, your profession, can really contribute enormously. Advocating for the equality of men and women has an enormous impact on peace. The elimination of racism and the violence that racism causes, not only on a local level, but on an international level, is really important. Um, but that leads me to the second thing. First, search your soul and discover what you can do personally and then commit to it. Second, join a group. Find a group that reflects your beliefs and your values and work with that group toward peaceful ends. That, I think, is the most important because people are much more powerful in groups than they are as individuals. And if you can find a group, uh, for me, it's the Baha'i faith and the Baha'i teachings, but it'll be different for everyone. If you can find a group, uh, a local peace group, uh, a church, you know, uh, an organization that focuses on, on uh, any kind of peace building, then join that group and your efforts will be multiplied. One of the things I love to do and have done in my local area with high schools and colleges is I joined a group that does something called peace recruiting. And we go and set up a little booth at those high school and college campuses. And we tell people, don't join the military. Don't kill people. Don't risk your own life. Find a profession, uh, a craft, a trade that contributes to peace rather than to war. And we've had an enormous uh, success with those booths in moving people away from military careers and into more peaceful ones. Wow. Now, David, how can people find out more about that? For example, do you have a website? Uh, there are hundreds, probably thousands of websites. <laughs> no, I, I mean of that up, particular. <laughs> just look You're up recruiting. peace recruiting. Yeah, okay. just Google peace recruiting, and you'll find lots of local groups who are doing that. If if there isn't one, start it yourself. It's easy. <laughs> it's true. You know, you remind me, I was just watching the movie not long ago about Dolores Huerta, um, who created the United Farm Workers Union in California back in the 1960s, and who really stood up and created the the motto, si se puede, that we, yes, we can, that, of course, Obama used in his campaign, but that really taking charge and finding out where the justice needs to be found is really important. So 
right now we're going to take a short break and we'll be back in a minute to have the last final words with our guest David Langness talking about how we can change from war to peace and this is your host Dr. Gail Lash you're listening to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Hi, my name is Myra Fox and I am a survivor I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve this stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki Energy Healing, or Hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Welcome back to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. And today, David Langness, we've had you here talking about war and peace. And everyone can find out more about David at BahaiTeachings.org. That's B-A-H-A-I, Teachings, T-E-A-C-H. I-N-G-S dot O-R-G, and the articles you've written. David, any last um, words for our listeners before we sign you off? Thanks, Gail. Thanks for having me. It's been wonderful to talk to you today and to all your listeners. I just want to say that, you know, when you think about peace, think about it this way. Peace is love made visible. Peace Ooh. is not just the absence of war. It's the expression of of love between human beings. So in all your work for peace, I would encourage everyone who's listening to think about the people they love in their lives, their children, their parents, their friends, their significant others, and to to imagine that that person is killed in a war that you could have prevented. Uh, That may give you the uh, impetus to go out there and work for peace every day. Because really, peace is love made visible. Thank you. What profound, wonderful words to end that (laughs) uh, on. I really appreciate it. Thank you, David, for being on Peace Explorer. So today we're going to go into our peace action. I have this at the end of our show every time. And right now, Mercury, the planet, happens to be in retrograde. And these peace actions I came up with as tweets, so they're very short. This one says, planets in retrograde are a great time to do re-things, R-E, things. Research, revise, redo, reclaim, rethink, reconnect. So my challenge to you this week is to take that peak action, action to really practice being in that Mercury retrograde to where you do the re-things, the researching, revise, You know, start to think about, well, maybe how can I rethink something? How can I reconnect with someone I haven't talked to in a while? How can I research this, what we've been talking about today, that there are less wars on the planet than in previous eons, centuries, millennia? How can we revise our policies? How can we redo something to a better, to make it even better? 
So I challenge you about that. We have a Facebook group, of course, called Peace Explorer. And I'll put this tweet, this uh, peace action on that Facebook group and love your comments about it and how you're actually creating it. So we, uh, we are also, I just want to give you a little story about how I actually revised, if you will, my thought. I was planning on going to Belize, one of the, my favorite countries in February, but I hadn't made any plans really yet. And there was also a conference going on at that time. And a friend of mine called me up yesterday and said, gee, you want to room with me at the conference and, and be my roommate? And I said, yes, I really did. And this is great. So I was able to revise my thinking. And instead of going to Belize, I'm going to the conference. So, so that's an example of, of revising and thinking about what you can do during this Mercury retrograde, which will end on December 23rd. So I want to have you check out David, our guest, and his website or his writings on BahaiTeachings.org. And if you'd like to learn more about me, Dr. Gail Lash, you can go to my website, TourismForPeace.com. That's T-O-U-R-I-S-M-F-O-R-P-E-A-C-E.com. And you'll find out about the various things that we do, how to create a place of peace, as we talked about in the beginning of the show, and be able to create your place where these dialogues can happen. You can talk about how we can actually help create our community. So remember that creating peace really starts with talking about peace to your neighbors, your coworkers, your family. It begins with these new beliefs that peace is even possible, as we talked about today. And then as David said, taking action that peace is love made visible. It's really implementing these solutions in your workplace, in your community, and making your mark and putting your place of peace on the World Peace Trails map. So thanks for tuning in today to Peace Explorer on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is your host, Dr. Gail Lash. See you next week. Many blessings. You've been listening to Peace Explorer with your host, Dr. Gail Ash. Listen each week and become closer to the global peace principles for both self and society on Dr. Gail Lash's Peace Explorer. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.